live from Latches Performing Arts. He's a world-renowned psychic medium, best-selling author, and spiritual inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt Frazier. So one of the things that I want to let you know is that when I'm looking out onto all of you, all I see is dead people. I feel like I'm looking out onto the funeral home. Because not only are you sitting here, everyone's like, oh my God. Because not only are you standing here or sitting here, but your loved ones that had passed are here as well. Your dad departed. He's sitting right in that chair next to you. That's how I see them. So I want to let you know how it works for me. So when I was out there, your dad was sitting right here next to you telling me that, that you were his daughter. But sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. And your mom passed as well. She's saying hello. <laughs> She's like, I told you. Hello. Did you, did you not believe me when I said I saw dead people? Because when I come over here, your mother's talking to me. She's like, that's my daughter. She's here. She's got my ring on today. That's how I hear them. Can you pass that over? Because your father's stepping forward with me. And he said to me, you were not expecting him to come through today. No. Because there were issues that were, that were had here in the physical world. Do you understand that? Yes. Because he said to me, you need to talk to my daughter. Please, please, please talk to my daughter. Did, did you lose the child? Who was the child that passed? Um, one died when she was a baby, and I lost my uh, son four, month, uh, four years ago. Four years ago. I want to talk about the, the um, baby first. Because all of a sudden, your mom also departed. Because yes. I have mother here, and she's holding this baby that's here, which would be your daughter. So, and is there also George? Yes, that was his best friend. He's with him as well. Oh, wonderful. Like, I feel like there's a father coming, to, coming through, but I feel like I'm a stepfather. Um, ex-father. Oh, your ex-father-in-law. Yeah. But you were very close to him. Do you understand yeah. that? Okay. Because mm -hmm. he said to me, I'm the father, but I'm not the father. Yeah. So, know that one of the things is that this, is, this was your boyfriend in high school, because he just said to me, that's my girlfriend. So, you're going to remember that so that's the way that he's connecting with you. So you, and she talks about you holding her over the sink. So you used to hold her head over the sink and like wash her hair and like put the bobby pins in. Yeah. And what the hell, what happened? He says to me there was a big issue because he left the hospital and he wasn't supposed to. Right, he checked himself out. What? Yeah. <laughs> and how did you build things or like, because uh, he showed me tools. How do you connect with the tools? He built the house I grew up in and I built the house I live in now. Perfect. Because he said to me, it's like the same thing. So, and he showed me the tools and I put the wood going up. So if he built the house and then now you built the house, your, it's your dad's way of showing you, well, showing me, and acknowledging about the similarities that he had. Your dad sends you birds to let you know that he's there and with oh. you. So do you see birds, how do you connect with that? I just bought this a couple of days ago because of the birds. So and you I, bought that shirt just because of the birds? I didn't know why, but I was just saying to my wife, I just had to get this because of these birds. <laughs> she showed me, like, do you have a journal of hers? I have diaries. Perfect. And you've been reading through them? Started to. Started to. Your mother's so happy that you found them. She says, you know, I used to write every day in this, in this diary. She says, and I did this she says, because, I was, because if I passed, my, my loved ones or my family would still be able to read about my life and read about me as though I'm still there and with them. She just said to me when I'm, when I'm speaking to her that you have jewelry box of hers. Was it a jewelry box? Yes. yes. Because she says, you need to talk about the jewelry box and you keep it of hers. She says, and I know that you stopped bringing flowers to my grave. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Chris? Tell me Chris. Chris, Christos is my son. And he's talking about Bobby. How do you connect with Bobby? Yes. Who's that to you? My nephew. That's your nephew. And he's on the other side and he's drinking with me while I'm connecting with him. Oh my God. And he said to me, my family's only gonna know it's me if I'm drinking and I have the beer bottles with me. Yeah. Did you bring things of his with you today? Here, Are you wearing a shirt? Sure, his pants. You're yeah. wearing his clothes right yes. now? Because he just pulled out the clothes, before you even said that, he just said to me, she's wearing my clothes. So those are all his. He saw that you wore this today. And he said to me, my mother, before she even got to this, to this event, was begging and begging me to come through. Yes, I was. And you said to him, if this is really you, talk about the clothes, talk about this outfit. He says to me that you talk to him every single night before you go to bed. I talk to him in the morning and I tell him he's the last person I talk to at night. Perfect. So if you end the day talking with him, he's the last person that you talk to, you know it's his way of acknowledging that. Because he shows me that you go and you'll get his picture and you'll even talk to it and you kiss his picture. He says, I felt all those kisses in heaven. 
Nobody knows that you do that. You're the only one. Because when I talk to your loved ones, I say, tell me things that nobody else would know. And he says, she kisses my picture every single night. Your dad just said to me that what he wants you to know is that he's so proud of the woman that you've become. And more importantly, that he watches over you every single day. You pray for everybody else in heaven except for him. He says, so today, you didn't know that. You, you, didn't, you didn't know that, that he knew. But he does. Your loved ones can see everything that you do. Everything that you do. But they're not there to judge. But your father did say to me, I'm sorry. And more importantly, he just, he just, I just saw him run and grab you and hug you. He says, even though I never said I love you here in the physical world, I'm letting you know this from the other side. You had to go through so much without me because I was never the father that I should have been. He says, but I want you to know that I love you. I care about you just the same. And more importantly, he says that I was able to see everything that I missed out on. I'm sorry, he says, and I'm hoping that you, for you forgive me. He tells me you wrote him a letter after he died. He's got that letter in heaven. I wrote it last week. It was the anniversary of his death. And so, I know he's with me. I just didn't get to say goodbye. So last week you wrote him that letter? Yeah. It's his way of letting you know that when you wrote him that letter, he saw that. And more importantly, he says, I love you too. Because if I'm coming through, and I'm here of all people, he said, <laughs> I can let you know that heaven is real. He says, first of all, you walked in here with a question today. And that question is, does he, did he really love you? Did he really care about you? Or was I just his friend? And he said to me, I loved you unconditionally. He says, I took my own life. And I'm sorry for what you had to go through because you were held responsible. And people were like, well, why didn't she help him? Why wasn't she there for him? Why didn't she say something? And he says, all the guilt fell on you and nobody saw what you were doing behind the scenes. People felt that, that he killed himself because you broke up and you ended the relationship, but that's not what happened. You, you broke up because of the fact that he was doing all of these things and he treated you disrespectfully. He says, and I wish I could take it all back because he's acknowledging that. And then he passed while? While you were gone. Well, well, I just missed it. But know that that's not something that you have to hold on to. He says, it's not about going to the errand and missing my passing because you didn't miss anything else. You were there for him every day. You were there with the back and forth to the doctors. You were checking, you were checking reports. You were checking different things. He even tells me you brought in specialists or, or other doctors for second opinions to see him. And he even talks about you were trying to get him to another city or you were trying to bring him to another city to get seen. Do you understand that? So your father said to me, that's what's important. When you went to the store and you miss, missed his passing, you're like, oh my God, I missed my father's passing. It's not about that. It's about the fact that you didn't miss the doctor's appointment. You were there for him. You kept him alive. You were his strength. You were his daughter. And more importantly, that you gave up so much of your life. That's, he says, that's what I care about. But it's like you didn't even realize about how much that he truly loved you or cared about you till after his passing. And like everyone would come up, to me, come up to you and say like, he talked all the time about you. He spoke very highly of you. He connected with you in certain ways. Do you understand that? So he said to me that he's sorry for letting you down. He says, if it's the one thing that I want you to know, it's that I'm one of the guardian angels that watch over you every single day. And more importantly, that he wants you to be happy in your life because he's acknowledging that. Are you in a relationship right now? I'm married. You're married, perfect. So no, it's his way of acknowledging that he's so happy that you're able to be married and to start a new life of your own. He says, but know that I'll never forget what you did for me. Even though you feel like it wasn't enough, and by the way, he did not mean to do this. I want you to know that. So even though there was questions over, was it a suicide? Did he mean to do this? Did he mean to take his life? Did he mean to overdose? He said to me, no. He says, I, this was an accidental overdose. He says, I took too much. I couldn't take it anymore. And then I died. He says, I want you to know that I love you. I care about you. And that more importantly, after all of these years, I'm still watching over you. She says, I'm always there and with you. And there's also a baby with her as well. Where was the baby that passed? She'd be my sister, but she passed at birth. So your sister passed at birth. That's also with your mother. Because she said to me that when she went to the other side, she saw this baby. She goes, and when I saw that baby there, she says, I knew that I was in heaven. Your son just asked me to give you a hug from him from the other side. Can you come over here? I hope this helps you today. As close as I am to you, is as close as your son always is.